Welcome to Chapter 3. In this first section of Chapter 3, we'll be learning about parallel lines and transversals. A transversal is simply a line that intersects two or more lines at different points. The key part here is the at different points part. It has to cross two lines at two different points. So in our picture here, the purple line is the transversal. It crosses the first black line in that area that I've just circled, and it crosses the other black line down here. Therefore, we can call the purple line a transversal. It crosses two or more lines at different points. When we have a transversal, we have some parts that go along with them. First is, we have corresponding angles. When you hear the word corresponding, you should think of matching. So we're going to match one angle from the top group with one angle from the bottom group. We always match them in pairs, and it's always from the opposite groups. We're not in the same pairing. Corresponding angles, then, I would match angle 1 with angle 5. Notice how one angle 1 is in the top left of this group and angle 5 is also in the top left of that group. Our other correspondings would be 2 and 6, 3 and 7, and 4 and 8. Those are all of our corresponding or matching angles. The next grouping is alternate interior. When you think of interior, you need to take your two lines and imagine squashing them together. We would, if we squashed our two lines together, we would take three, four, five, six and squash them inside of our two lines. Now, alternating, that kind of means back and forth. So when we think of our alternating angles, it would be angles four and five and also three and six. Angle 1 and 8 are also alternating, however, they are not interior. They would be considered exterior, so we could not call them interior angles. Now we have alternate exterior angles. This is where angles 1 and 8 come in. Angle 1 is on the outside of this pair, and angle 8 is on the outside of the other pair or section. And also, we have angles 2 and 7. They would also be considered alternate exterior angles. Next, we have consecutive interior. Again, we need one angle from one side of the interior and one angle from the other side of the interior. Although we could think of a 3 and 4 of being consecutive, the problem is they're on both are on the same side. We would need one from this group of 1, 2, 3, 4, and one from also 5, 6, 7, 8. For that reason, we will have to say that angles 3 and 5 and also angles 4 and 6 would be our consecutive interior angles. Lastly, a quick little review here. Remember that parallel lines are coplanar lines that never intersect. We oftentimes will mark parallel lines with arrows on the lines, not on the ends. Notice the two red arrows on these two lines are our parallel line markings. As you look around your room, there are plenty of examples of parallel lines. When we're in our classroom, we have the tile lines on the floor, the tile lines on the ceiling, and many, many, many other examples. Also, we've talked about before, skew lines. Skew lines are very similar to parallel lines in the fact that they never cross. However, skew lines are non-coplanar lines that never cross. Again, if you think about your classroom or think about your room, 
if you think of one edge of the room running vertically and then any other edge of the room that would not cross that would be considered to be skew. So we have parallel and we have skew. Very similar but very different words. Our last word for today is parallel planes. We've also seen this one before. It is two planes that never intersect each other. So parallel planes are two planes that never intersect. We have many examples of this. If you think of the room that you're in or of our classroom, the ceiling and the floor would be parallel planes. Any two walls that are opposite each other would be parallel planes and many, many other examples. If you have any questions about these definitions or any of the things in today's lesson, make sure to talk to me tomorrow when you come to class.